Solid state batteries have the ability to change everything in daily life. Fast charging EVs, safe charging EVs, EVs that, well, charge when it's freezing outside as well as when it's blistering hot. The problem is this holy grail of battery technology has been postponed for forever. Toyota has been working on it. They have gajillions of patents on solid state battery technology Honda, Nissan, you have solid power, quantum scape, factorial energy. Those ones are working, uh, you know, with OEMs. And of course you have the traditionals like Samsung, CATL, Panasonic, et cetera. There are so many battery companies and automotive companies around the world that are working on solid state batteries. Well, first of all, because there's, mo there's money to be made if you have a viable solid state battery, especially if you get out to market before everyone else. But what if I told you all these mega companies are working on solid state batteries with billions and billions of dollars and decades of investment time? What if I told you that they're not first to market? There's a little company called Donut Lab out of Scandinavia, Finland to be exact. And they are claiming with at this year's CES, last year, I'll talk about last year's CES in a little bit and how I'm why I'm excited for this. But this year's CES, they pulled the curtain off of their new solid state battery technology that offers about double-ish. We'll talk about this here in a little bit. Double the, the energy density compared to lithium ion batteries, they charge faster. They have about endless cycles. Okay. Cycles that will meaning you can charge and deplete charge, deplete the battery endless amount of times. Okay. They, they say it's cheaper than traditional lithium ion batteries. This is it guys. The donut lab has done it. They've made solid state batteries today. We're going to go over this technology, why I'm excited about it, but is it too good to be true? Is this smaller company, this startup, claiming these wild claims with little evidence to back it up? Could they really outsmart all of these mega companies with endless resources? But stay to the end because I will do my best to bring this story down to reality for you guys. All right. Donut Lab is actually a spinoff of Verge Motorcycles, which is a Finnish electric motorcycle maker, and they have insane in-wheel uh, electric motors. But what's unique about them is I believe that they are uh, axial flux, something that um, you'll see more and more in Mercedes vehicles, and you'll see it probably continue to permeate EV uh, locomotion, to be honest. But these motorcycles are going to be using the salt state batteries from Donut. Again, Donut is, is going to be bigger than Verge. I guess you could say Verge. If Verge created Donut, Okay, how could Donut be bigger? Well, that's like saying Toyota Industries created uh, Toyota Motor Corp. Okay, Toyota Motor Corp is way bigger than Toyota Industries. It's a similar but different comparison. Okay, motorcycles are never going to sell that high in volume, even if you have solid state batteries compared to at least cars here in the United States. Different markets are different. You look at Southeast Asia, solid state batteries could be very advantageous down there, you know, assuming they have places to charge, all right, and superchargers. But 400 watt hours per kilogram, that is impressive. That's higher than anything else that I'm aware of in production from lithium ion. If you look at uh, let's say Panasonic, they're somewhere, you know, on their higher end cell, somewhere around 270 to 300 watt hours per kilogram. Okay. Uh, full charge in five minutes. That is absurd. Now, Verge Motorcycles is not charging that fast. They said, hey, we actually slowed the charging on the motorcycle so you can enjoy your rest stop. Why would you slow your charge if it can handle faster charging just to say you can enjoy your rest stop more in a cup of coffee? I'm not buying that. Even if it's not zero to 100 in five minutes, these things, these Verge motorcycles, these solid state batteries charge at 200 kilowatts and can charge up to 80% in 10 minutes. I think that's really impressive and it's faster than anything else on the road today, whether it's a car or a motorcycle. That is insane. No, I have my own motorcycle channel. I could cover this on that, but this is still a niche. Why is it niche? Because we're talking, guys, we're talking motorcycles that start at $30,000 here. And I'm not saying that the batteries are, are that expensive or the motors are that expensive, but you have high it's, they're still kind of a, they're very small, so they don't have the benefit of like scale production, 
the more you scale, cheaper things get. The more you buy, the more you save. Verge is very, very boutique. And that's why you have high, high prices here. But you get something that's, it's an exotic motorcycle, except it doesn't sound exotic. It's going to be fairly silent, right? It's electric, but it's really cool. And I, I'm a big, big sucker for this sort of design. I can't wait for, for stuff like this to be well, way cheaper. Solid state. Bat I'm going to see it in my lifetime. We're getting closer, guys. We're getting closer. Is Donut Lab, have they cracked it? Has Verge Motorcycles cracked it? Well, you know, not, not at the price point. But here's the thing. It says lower cost than lithium. And Verge nor Donut Lab have communicated what kind of materials they're using. I'm going to take a swing at it in a little bit. They are working with um, Watt EV. Now, they say Watt EV builds uh, skateboard chassis for uh, OEMs. They, they didn't get too specific here, but you know it's aluminum architecture. It's lightweight. I mean, this looks like something that was, you know, just hand welded together. I've honestly have never heard Watt of Watt EV. And many of you guys have probably never heard of Verge Motorcycles. That one's still new to me. Again, I saw them last year at CES and was really blown away with their, their donut motor. But I'm not going to focus too much on the donut motor. That is just an amazing technology on its own. And it's something that could we could see it more and more. Regardless of solid state battery success or not from Donut, I think you will see their motors more and more over time. At least that's my hope because I think it's fascinating. I think it's it's really energy dense, it's lightweight, and they keep getting better. But here we go. Is this really the holy grail, guys? Is this really gonna happen? This low cost, it's safe, it's easy to make. Well, I don't know about easy to make but they say it's low cost and easy to make things are typically low cost, um, extremely safe. Yes, it, it can char it retains 99% of its uh, capacity, minus 30 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius. All right. So, and the cycle life is unreal here. All right. It just doesn't compare to anything else. Here's the chart, the state of charge uh, and time in terms of seconds, not minutes and seconds. That is absurd. 90%. And what is this about 350 seconds, five to six minutes, right? That's insane. That's just on the cell level. But if you look at Verge, you know, again, they're saying 10 minutes, up to 60 kilometers of range per minute. Um, and there's going to be, guys, the long range version of this, the long range motor of this Verge motorcycle is going to have 600 kilometers, which equates to about 370 miles. I don't know what cycle that's being tested on. That's probably city range, you know, under 50 miles an hour. I would say if you're doing highway stuff, it's probably going to be, I don't know, two thirds of that. Even then, 250 miles of range or 200 miles of range is still impressive at high speeds on a motorcycle. All right. The one thing about this Verge motorcycle, I will say, you have 201 horsepower on this Ultra, but you reduce the top speed to 124 miles an hour. With 201 horsepower on a motorcycle, you get to 100 and you get to 100 miles an hour in like four to five seconds. It's absurdly fast. And then you're saying, oh, you know, by six, seven seconds, you know, you're maxed out at speed. So you have all this power that you can't really use. So they're telling us everything they want to hear. You can use these batteries and everything. You can use them in cars. Uh, I don't know what this bullseye is. Is that like uh, military grade? Possibly drones. You can use these in factories. You can use them as energy storage. You can use them in motorcycles. You can use these solid state batteries in anything and everything. They are 100% green. What is, I don't know what that means, honestly. Like, does that mean there's no mining that's involved? Like, in the ground? You're not pulling this from the, where is, where are these materials coming from? So now I'm getting into, is this too good to be true? If it's not, what are the implications? All right. So is it too good to be true? 100% green. Well, nothing's 100% green. Humans aren't 100% green inherently, right? We we pollute, we poop, we pee, we, you know, breathe out carbon dioxide. Is it greener than lining, mining cobalt and graphite and all that other stuff? Great. I'm happy about that. They say, though, it, it does not use lithium. It does not, it's not using lithium here. And they say lithium can be, um, you know, not so green. You have to use a lot of water to, to mine lithium. Okay. So that is interesting. What are they using instead? Abundant materials with global availability. Well, you know, 
what battery chemistry is abundant? Well, sodium. And sodium's available everywhere. I mean, even if you don't have ocean, you probably have some access to some sodium. Sodium is available everywhere. It's cheap to get. It's hun It's a green. You just pull some water out and then you let it ev evaporate and then you have salt. If I were a betting man, I would say these batteries are salt state sodium ion. Now, sodium ion is used for energy storage mainly, but in China, I think they also use them for EVs and they're very cheap. They're very affordable. So if you don't need to rely on China for lithium or graphite or cobalt, or you don't have to rely on child labor with cobalt, that sort of thing, great. This is awesome. Lower material cost on lithium ion. To me, this smells like salt water and that's okay because it's available everywhere. It's going to be cheap to manufacture. Okay. Now, Here's something that I, I have a huge, this is one of my biggest worries. What kind of scale can these be made at? Is Donut just going to sell this uh, maybe chemistry, the patented chemistry to and let other companies be able to use sodium batteries? And I don't know. Is, it, is, is Panasonic going to be able to use this chemistry to build solid state batteries? I, I don't know. I, you would think Donut would just be like, hey, we're going to do it all ourselves, but they don't have a massive battery manufacturing facility that I'm aware of, right? How many motorcycles a year does Verge sell? If I can even find this, uh, they don't disclose perfect. They don't disclose annual sales figures. Let's say they sell 5,000 bikes a year. Well, it wouldn't be that hard to make you know cells, that many cells for that many bikes, solid state cells. Okay, that's very, very low volume. But if these cells start making their way into to big old BEVs at really high uh, production volume, how can they scale these up? Other than like, hey, is this really low cost? Is do they really have they really cracked the formula for solid state batteries at low cost? That's one end of it. Okay, great. Maybe you've done that. Have you also been able to manufacture solid state batteries at high scale? And until I see it, I won't believe it. Solid state battery production is the most difficult aspect of solid state batteries. It's yes, the chemistry is one thing. And, and if the chemistry is less sensitive to environmental conditions, then yes, manufacturing will be affordable and easier to do. But until... I see them produce these solid state batteries as a massive scale on an efficient scale at an, at an affordable scale. I don't, I'm not buying it. I want to eat donut is enticing. I want to eat a whole dozen of these donuts, gorge me on these, these tall tales of solid state batteries. Guys, sodium ion. Great. If you make sodium ion and that this is just the beginning in theory of the solid state sodium ion, this could scale up to a higher and more efficient watt hour per kilogram. All right, this isn't the end game. This is just the next logical leap for battery technologies going from liquid polymer to solid polymer. And then we're talking like quantum leaps in everything that we use. You, you want to char charge your phone for days. You want to charge your EV for days, or you can have half the weight of your EV half the weight, the same range. That's one of the things that I dislike most about EVs when I drive them, not their amazing acceleration. That's awesome. I don't like how heavy they are. You throw it in a turn and it's just like, oh man. And then with the added weight, it's not good for tires. And then you have to really have stiff suspensions to suspend all this heavy battery. So, but if we can have a battery in a car that charges zero to 80 or 90% in 10 minutes or less, even if it has 300 miles of range, not a big deal. I would take, I would take 300 miles of range in an EV. If it has half the weight of the battery of a current EV, as long as it can charge fast as all hell. I know infrastructure is not great, but it's good enough uh, for NAX for, for road trips. All right. You can charge it up real, real fast, have a perfect charging rate. Okay, of 200 watts or kilowatts, I mean, 200 kilowatts, instead of having like with liquid polymers, oh, you have this charging curve, then after 
you know, 40%, it starts going down and down and down. And then you get to 80 and it's just like, you're going to be there for another 40 minutes. If you really want that last 20% of your available battery. All right. This could change everything. If produced on scale, a scale that would satisfy traditional car OEMs, uh, and at a cost that undercuts a lithium ion. This is amazing. This is what we've been waiting for, but I'm not sold, not sold because I've been burned with solid state batteries and battery announcements for well, forever, right? It always seems solid state battery always seems right around the corner and it's not right around the corner until I see it at a high scale production at a low cost. They're saying they got the low cost aspect down, but I don't see the high production volume here. They don't even say where they're making these batteries. Are they just making it at the research and develop facilities somewhere in Finland? I know that they have other offices in UK and I think one other place, uh, Donut Labs. So, you know, it's, it's exciting. And I think they're onto something here, but again, I will see you guys in the comments. This is, this has the ability, the potential to change the world as we know it. But until we see it and are able to purchase it at affordable prices, this is not affordable here, guys, for a toy. Okay. Well, for some people it is, but we need it to be affordable for the masses. EVs that cost $20,000 and have 300 miles of range, okay, and can charge in five minutes. That's what we need. If if EVs are going to take off and, and supplant internal combustion, they have to be better in every way. And Donut says that, that they've done it. They've been able to supplant internal combustion with this new battery. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see where this goes. It's pie in the sky until I see it in my driveway. Well, or on the streets. I don't need to buy it, but it needs to be buyable. It needs to be available. And it needs to be at a very, very high scale to make an impact. Thank you, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. And I'll see you at the next Solid State Battery announcement. It's going to be another one probably next week. Peace out.